I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we've been talking about faith. Now listen, when you hear words like this, the Bible says, examine yourself. Examine yourself. And it's important that you take time to listen to those messages. If you've not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, do so. Too, so, so you can you, you know where to go to and just get these messages and, and, and listen and listen and listen until your eyes are opened to see. Sometimes you may have to listen to it more than once, as many times as possible until you get it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you ready for us to receive our daily bread today? Are you are you ready? Let's say this declaration when you say, Father, give me today my daily bread thank you lord jesus i receive it now in jesus name amen a miracle is coming your way today in the name of the lord jesus father we bless you today thank you because our faith is getting strong because our minds are being tuned by the holy spirit to receive words from you in Jesus name I declare right now every body is lifted every yoke is destroyed in Jesus mighty name amen praise God <laughs> the Kabushaya. now we we were dealing on faith what is faith because you see if you don't understand it says Content for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Uh, if you don't understand what faith is, you see, now I was talking to you yesterday and, and I said some, some very hard things. If you don't understand these things, even the Bible will become your limitation. Because all you do is you read and you look at your life. I don't measure. But everything that was written in the Bible was written for us to learn from. It was written for us to learn from. And what do we do? What do we do with everything we've learned with Abraham, for example? The story of Abraham. Now, now I told you the Bible is a compendium of testimony. So let's look at Abraham, for example. You know, even, even Hebrews, Hebrews, where we're reading, says, he began to list by faith Abel, you know, offered sacrifice, more excellent than Cain. You know, he goes on to say, um, he goes on to say, by faith Noah, and then he goes on to say, by faith Abraham. So all these men had substance. And what was their substance? And what was the strength of their substance? The strength of their substance is in their relationship with God. So how come God will speak to Abraham and he will carry these words for many years without failing, without shaking. The Bible says he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in substance, in his substance. He was strong in his substance. Now, do you know why the Bible says he didn't stagger, but he was strong in his substance? Not because he didn't have opportunities to stagger. Of course, when you read the story, but hey, 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 hey. In that places where he should have staggered, you know what he did? Lord, you remember one time, because God had promised him a lot, and 
He spoke to God one day and says, how am I going to know that I will inherit this land? Oh, you've never said, let me show you. Genesis. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at this now. Genesis chapter 15. He said, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, be, but Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham, saying, This shall not be thy heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy heir. See? Now, Abraham was going to stagger at this point. And, but instead of staggering to fall, he decided to ask the Lord. He said, Lord, excuse me. How is it that you've promised me all these things and then I don't have any air, I don't have any seed? And God said, no. Because Abraham was thinking, what's the point? After all the blessing, my servant is going to inherit everything. And God said, no, your servant will not inherit everything. But I will give you a seed that is going to come out of your loins. That's what God said to him. He said, I'll give you a seed that will come out of your loins. And that seed will be your heir. Hmm. Instead of staggering, Abraham asked the Lord, listen, when your faith begins to fail, when your substance begins to get weak, don't sit down there and, and, and no, speak to the Lord. Cry out to the Lord. There is no one, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what the Bible says. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, when you notice that you're beginning to stagger, now, you will stagger when your faith is weak. What you need then is to make your faith strong. What you need then is to, is to make your substance to be strong. How do you make your substance strong? Simple. Talk to the Lord. Call on him. Just like Abraham did. Call on him. And God will answer you. What did he say? Call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will answer you. Not only will I answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you did not know. Oh, oh. whoa. Hmm. He will show me great and mighty things that I do not know. What does he say? I will make your substance strong. Because, see, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without substance, without having substance. So when you say, I have faith in God, where is your substance? Um, I just believe God's going to do it somehow. Where is your substance? No, no, no. Um, uh, he, he will do it now. He will do, why, why shouldn't he? You see, that's the problem we, 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 with a lot of people. You just assume God should do it for you because he is a good God. But then, where is the relationship that you are quoting? Where is the relationship that you are drawing from? Where is your substance? Karu bashaka You know, Read, even in Hebrews, where we're reading from, he began to, everyone he listed in the book of Hebrews 11, 
that works by faith. Say, by faith, this one did this, by faith, this one did that. Every one of them, they had one thing in common. Every one of them heard the voice of God. Yeah, every one of them heard the voice of God. God spoke to them directly, not through a book, not through, no, God spoke to them directly. Now, that was the difference between David and King Saul. You see, King Saul never heard from God directly. King Saul depended on Samuel to hear the voice of God. So he goes, call me Samuel. Oh, Samuel should come and tell us what the Lord is saying. Call me Samuel. Call me Samuel. That was, Sam, that was Saul's problem. But David, you know, David, you hardly hear that a prophet will come to tell David what, what the Lord wants him to do. David knew how to consult the Lord. The Bible says, and David inquired of the Lord. He said, hey, get me the Urim and the Turim. Get, get it. And he inquired of the Lord. David had a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. He knew what the Lord wanted him to do at all times. He knew. There are a few times prophets came to him, and, and that was mostly when he, he wanted to make a mistake. You remember when he wanted to build the house. He wanted to build the, God, build the Lord a house. And then he, he, he called the prophet and said, this was in my mind. I want to build God a house. And the prophet said, go ahead. Now, why, why did David call the prophet? I'll tell you. He, he wanted to do something good for the Lord. And, and he began to think about it. So like, wow, look, I have built a good palace for myself. And he, he, he remembered the ark of the Lord and said, Lord, this ark, mm -mm, I, why is it in one small cross? You know, just, just this small place. I, I think if this is the glory of God, then we should keep it in a, in a glorified place. We should keep it in a magnificent place. We've got the money. We've got the resources. But something wasn't adding up. Because normally when David thinks like that and meditates on the God's word and, and, and fellowship with the Lord, the Lord will expressly tell him what to do and how to go about it. But this particular case, it wasn't adding up. Something was just not adding up. So... Like we do today, you know, you, you want to, you want to, you get a trusted voice that hears the Lord too. And then you share that thought with the person. And say, hey, prof, prophet, I'm, I'm thinking of building God a house, you know, I, I, I this, this is my concern. And the prophet said to him, wow, that's wonderful. Go, cool, come on, do what's in your heart because God is with you. Like, ah, Okay. All right. And then the prophet went back home and the Lord visited him. Now, because David was seeking the mind of God, see, and, and he, he was consumed with this thought. Now, now, what I'm sharing with you is, is, is what happens. You find out many times. Now, you, you are a servant of God or you're a prophet of God and, and you prophesy into people's lives. You too, but then it's so difficult for you to prophesy into members of your family. It's so difficult for you to prophesy about your children. It's so difficult for you to prophesy about your spouse. Now, you, you wonder, how come? Why, why can't I? It's not because the Lord is holding it back. No, it's because your emotions and your knowledge is, inter we, it's, is intertwined, you know, together with these people. So you, you want to prophesy, but then you are the one that is not so sure you are convinced that this is the Lord that is speaking. That's what's going on. Now, when it comes to other people, because you know there is no, most times, the foreknowledge is not there. You know, that's why sometimes I say, don't get too familiar with the prophet. You know what I mean, because it might interfere with his reception. It might just interfere with his reception. Not because God will not speak to him concerning you. Now, a, a wise prophet will understand that I don't need to, um, I don't need to get a prophecy to these people directly under me. 
oh, you need to understand this. Our, our, our time is almost up and this is coming up. Maybe, maybe we should leave this for tomorrow. Holy Spirit, help us. Because this is so important. It's so important, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. I give you praise. I give you praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm going to continue tomorrow on this. Don't, don't miss tomorrow's broadcast. God bless you. Bye.